an ADOS dude, ADOS dude, there was an ADOS dude named Bill something. Bill the icon. Bro, bro. Bro, all the dirty laundry. So boom, wanted to get into this um, conversation that has been sparked by the whole Will Smith smacking of Chris Rock um, at the Grammys on Sunday. Um, and one of the major prevailing themes in the black community that I've um, been a privy to or been privy to um, is protect black women and that this energy needs to be uh, replicated and um, distributed um, throughout all black men in the black community. Uh, we need to step our games up. Um, we need to throw caution to the wind and protect black women at all costs. Um, and to me, on his face, that sounds good on paper, um, but it's really a, a warped perception um, of what it actually means to provide protection uh, for your woman. And um, just wanted to touch on it really quickly. I made a post um, in my community section and been, um, in the comments section, I'm pretty much getting dogged by um, one particular commenter. Um, I may share um, some of her thoughts on the page uh, because it just um, it's the same thing um, that I always talk about. Um, it's nothing new under the sun. Um, I'm going to share this clip of Sister Shaharazad Ali, uh, who wrote the book, The Black Man's Guide to Understanding the Black Woman. Um, this is a book that I've read um, right around the time it was published. I think I probably was in high school had to be around 1988, I believe, or 89, uh, when I first came across the book, um, as my dad had a copy, um, and I read it cover to cover, and even as a very young man, um, that book and the ideas that it presented uh, resonated um, very much so um, with me, um, and to this day. Um, and I've been telling people uh, with the rise of brothers like Kevin Samuels, um, and his critique um, of the modern day um, black woman, uh, much of it, um, in my opinion, um, emanates from the teachings and observations of um, Shahrazad Ali. Um, you know, he puts his own spin on it, um, but the ideas, the overarching ideas, um, in my opinion, um, are repackaging of Shahrazad Ali's ideas. Um, she's still around. And um, I saw her recently, um, just today or yesterday, brother, um, uh, Mediocre Tutorials and Reviews posted a clip um, of Sister Ali um, answering this very question. And I may post a clip of that video. I don't want to uh, violate his content uh, because he had a one-on-one -on -one interview um, with Sister Ali. I'm very envious um, of that brother for getting that interview. Um, I would love... Um, to sit with her, Skype with her, whatever the case may be. And so if you're listening to Sister Ali, I'd love to have you on my channel. Um, but nevertheless, um, as a re as a re in regarding to protecting black women, Sister Shara Ali, excuse me, um, Sister Ali basically said that um, a black woman must be in a position uh, where she can be protected, uh, basically meaning she has to be um, of the mind to be protected. She has to deserve to be protected by the way she carries herself, um, by the way she presents herself. Uh, she has to be in her lane, in order. Um, she has to want to be protected. Um, she also remarked that uh, many black women don't want to be protected. And it's something I always refer to um, because I feel like the modern day black woman, um, when you talk about providing protection, uh, for me, it's all encompassing. Um, a physical confrontation um, probably would rarely happen in most uh, people's lives. Um, the, time, the chances of me having to uh, physically defend my lady on a day-to-day -day basis, slim and none. But um, there are other ways that I can provide protection. Um, one of the main ways is to provide an environment um, in which... Um, they, your, your lady, your children, your family can feel safe, secure. Um, we, uh, whereas a man, um, you're able to provide security, um, hopefully you're able to provide financially um, if you're not in a compromised situation. Um, but however, 
Um, as we'll see, Sister Shahaz Ali says that, you know, there are many more ways um, that a man adds value to a situation. Um, not only by providing security and finances, um, but providing instruction, uh, providing guidance, um, discipline for the children, and um, a basic framework for the family, you know, to galvanize under. Um, now, granted, you know, the mom usually takes care of most of the day to day, um, you know, household um, chores, duties, whatever you want to call it, caring for the children, you know, cooking, cleaning, laundry, and the like. Um, but I wanted to share this clip and I'm going to share several clips and we're just going to listen to, um, Sister Shahaz Ali, you know, break down, you know, what's going on, um, some of the problems, the genesis of the problems and some solutions. Um, and I just love the fact that, um, I have this sister to refer to, um, because the women, uh, definitely don't want to hear from a man that they may get mad at. Um, Sister Ali, but I feel like it's best um, if sometimes these lessons come from a woman. Um, but I'm going to speak on it. My position is that the black woman's disrespect and rebellion against the leadership and the authority of the black man is a direct cause of the breakdown in our black family structure. And of course, there are many black people who consider those fighting words. Because as black women, we have never been subject to the kind of examination uh, that our men have been subject to since we have been here. We have been somewhat protected and shielded from any kind of critiquing about our personal behavior, whereas our men have always been up for examination. And let me just pause right there because, you know, we have to start right there um, with the ability um, to be critiqued and the ability, the ability to accept criticism. And that is one of the main um, issues that, you know, we run into uh, with our sisters is the fact that um, any form of criticism is viewed as an attack. Um, you know, if it's a valid criticism is often met with deflection. Um, it's often met with, um, you know, a very defensive posture. Um, it may start an argument, may may create tense environments. Um, brother might be sleeping on the couch uh, for a couple nights, or at least, you know, with his lady, with his back to him, if that's the situation. Um, but again, the ability to accept critique. Now, if you've never been um, subject um, to critique, then, of course, um, when that time comes for you to be put under the microscope, it's definitely going to be uncomfortable. Uh, but if you've been um, insulated in such an environment, whereas um, you've been able to avoid critique um, in a way that, you know, just smacks of um, favoritism, um, avoidance um, of, of accountability. And that's basically what it comes down to, um, to escape um, critical analysis or critique. Um, in most cases, is basically an attempt to um, escape accountability uh, for your actions because nobody's perfect and as sister said um, you know day in day out time and again throughout the ages uh, of our sojourn here in this situation um, the black man is constantly under the microscope um, picked, poked and prodded um, and much worse um, on a day to day basis um, in the media, in society um, in our social circles and even in our families um, you know most men you know, can attest to feeling um, that sort of alienation, um, you know, when it um, comes to a man being a man, um, a man having um, an opinion that's unpopular, um, you know, a, a man being an authoritarian figure. Um, and, and, and in many cases, what we have is a, um, a woman-centered um, culture um, as it relates to the black community. Um, the man has been pushed to the side uh, marginalized, alienated, and uh, all but made obsolete. Um, and the woman has been centered. And, you know, that was purposefully done. Um, that wasn't something that was just willfully done um, as, if, as if there was some sort of agreement um, between a black man and a woman that we were going to go our separate ways. No conditions were created. Um, historical context has to be paid attention to. 
Um, and I don't want to get into a history lesson, um, but you, it doesn't take, you know, much to uh, just take a look back over the past 50 to 60 years um, and see the steady disintegration of the black community. Um, the particular ills that have been introduced into the black community exacerbated uh, by economic situation, economic conditions, um, educational systems, which are broken um, and rapidly deteriorating. Uh, so we can, you know, point to a, a bevy of social factors um, that have caused um, the disintegration of um, the nuclear black family. I mean, we all play a part. Um, but again, you know, there's a, a, enough else to go around. And in my opinion, black men um, have been holding um, all of the else um, to the point where uh, many deem us the weakest link. Uh, when in fact, you know, we're just the biggest um, threat um, with the target, the biggest target on our backs. Um, every area of people activity, um, you know, we've been pretty much marginalized and pushed to the edges. So we have to start there. We have to um, be able to be examined. Um, and that goes for our sisters. It's not an attack on black women. I have never said that all black women do everything that I list in my book. Uh, none of us have lived long enough to do everything that I list in the book. But uh, most of us do some of the things that I've listed in my book. And I do say that it is not because of generalizations that we are all victimized by some of the negative patterns of behavior in the book, but the book just represents our collective contribution. This is some of everything that we have done, or that we do daily, that contributes to the breakup of our relationship, the destruction of our man, and the failure of our children to be able to function. They did not tell us that all of that, of being my own person, and I'm in... I'm going to pause it right there. Um, you can only avoid accountability uh, for so long and even um, if you continue to avoid accountability um, you can't lie to yourself um, as the sister said everybody has a part to play um, these are things um, that we have to discuss um, because they are being these attitudes these behaviors are being modeled are being exhibited um, are proliferating um, in the black community in the negative way um, so again you must be able to be uh, analyzed and critiqued. You must accept criticism when it's valid and constructive. Um, and you must be willing to be held accountable uh, for your shortcomings um, as well um, as a woman. And, um, you know, I feel like once we uh, can get to a point where responsibility is shared, and it's not um, a burden that's all uh, lumped onto the black man's shoulders. Uh, for him to bear, um, I believe, you know, we may get to a point um, where we can have some understanding. Because, again, you know, this next clip, she's going to talk about um, some of uh, the fallout uh, from the women's independence movement. Um, women wanted to be independent of men. Um, it was a great idea, it seemed, on its face uh, when pushed by the dominant culture. Um, but nobody told you about the consequences. And you know that, you know, just reminds me, you know, when we go around um, tearing down fences and we see a lot of um, tearing down of fences these days um, with the transgender movement, um, with men who are identifying as women, uh, being able to participate in women's sports, um, with the whole idea of allowing um, children um, to transition um, a lot of walls uh, a lot of fences are being torn down uh, but you have to think about um, why a fence was put up in the first place uh, why what was it put in place to protect and what was it put in place um, to keep out and if you go around tearing down fences um, without knowing why they were put up um, you eventually you end up opening up a Pandora's box, um, letting in a host of unintended consequences, um, in which uh, you may be unable to deal with, you may be unable to corral um, again. You know, so we just can't go around um, tearing down fences. Um, have you ever seen um, those signs 
uh, maybe around, you know, the city uh, where they have um, electrical lines, cable lines and such, uh, fiber optic um, cables um, buried in the ground. They always say, hey, if anybody's going to dig in this area, you know, give us a call uh, so we can let you know, you know, where it's safe to dig and how deep you may be able to go um, before you um, may do some damage. So and we have to keep that in mind as well. You know, walls and fences uh, make good neighbors. Independent would lead to separation, loneliness, celibacy, and lesbianism. They didn't tell us that if you give up the man, you're going to take one of these things and it's worse and it will destroy your nation. They didn't give us that information. They made us think that it was some kind of glorified position to brag about the fact that I got my own job, my own credit card, my own car, so I don't need no man. I don't even know how we got that mixed up. Ain't none of that got nothing to do with having being with no man. You know, we have some serious relationship problems that nobody has been able to address us on because everybody wants to pretend that this is not going on. You know, over 60% of our women are single, widowed, separated, or divorced. They don't have a man. And, you know, that is a theme that is also, um, to this day, a prevailing theme um, in, in, in the black community um, where we have, you know, independent black women and um you know educated some not um but in the workforce you know doing you know what they may perceive as you know their thing um job car all the um trimmings you know whatever the case may be um catching flights not feelings um moving around you know making the scene um by all intents and purposes, living their best life. And in some people's minds, that makes them um, somehow superior, um, you know, to their male counterparts. Um, I see a lot of women, you know, I notice a lot of women might say, you know, on dating sites or social media, um, you know, I got my own everything. If you come, you know, come to me, come correct, you got to have your own everything. You got to match my fly or whatever the case may be and you know on the surface those things sound great um, but if that is um, the sole criteria by which you try to choose a, a, a companion or a mate um, it's a pretty shallow uh, proposition uh, because material items um, jobs careers uh, may come and go um, you guys have seen what happened over the last two years um, during the pandemic um, you know, a lot of jobs are gone, never to return again. Um, a lot of people had to switch careers. Um, they had to make life changing career altering decisions, um, you know, based on uh, certain public policy pushes, um, that we have, um, been subject to over the past few years. So, you know, everything's fleeting, you know, nothing is forever. Uh, and if you're going to be with somebody over the long haul, uh, you're going to have to find some, uh, you know, something, you know, bigger than yourselves, um, an idea, a purpose, a goal, <clears throat> excuse me, a purpose or goal um, that's going to, um, you know, bind you together. Um, you have material items, um, somebody having a car um, and things like that, you know, that's great. You know, everybody needs um, these things, but making um, that's your um, top three. You know, I think in the long run, um, my sister said you're going to end up lonely.